Yes, uh, hey, this is Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. This is Pop the Culture, you know, culture from the black pill perspective. Now, you know, this is part two of, um, you know, false diversity in comics. Now, I didn't get to finish the, you know, the, the first section, but really... What I was saying and why you have false diversity in comic books and as I was stating with something such as DC Comics is that what DC did is they had a whole comic book, you know, company. They had a whole comic book company that was run by black people called Milestone Comics and then what they did is they just shelved it. Even though Static Shock had a major, major level of success, they didn't, they didn't, uh, you know, in the 2000s, they didn't add more from the franchise. For example, the Milestone had Icon. Milestone had many other series, and they didn't add more new animated series. And you have to understand, this is the 2000s. This is when rap is taken off at its uh, peak, it's gone, you know, it's not being as limited as it was in the 90s. Because in the 90s, there was a lot of lot of uh, factors that were limiting rap's mainstream success. A lot of radio stations were holding off on playing rap, limiting its reach. But in the 2000s was when rap actually broke through the barrier completely. And in the 2010s, as you could see, rap became all-consuming to the point where, you know, rap is, you know, American music to where if it, they don't play rap at a location, the public will leave. Now, what you saw with DC is they shelved, they shelved uh, Milestone Comics, even though Static, as I was saying, was extremely successful. Rappers were features on, featured on the show, Little Romeo... Shaquille O'Neal. It was. It had a huge mainstream people that jumped on to the cartoon show. Static Shock. There wasn't a toy run. There was. There wasn't nothing, man. It was just kept limited. You know, even though it was extremely successful. I mean, you could even look. Uh, Sony even copied Static Shock with a video game. I forget the name of the game right now, but it has to do with a character with superpowers. He had electrical powers. And the thing about Static Shock that was extremely cool, unlike your average electrical powered characters, which usually just, you know, throw lightning or electricity at you, you know, Static Shock flew on, a, you know what I'm saying? He flew on a, a manhole covering, you know, it, it was awesome, you know. But Static Shock. I think he got one video game release for uh, the Game Boy Advance. And uh, after that, it was really shelved, man. No matter how successful, the whole generation grew up on Static Shock. And what do you get by DC? Later on, DC makes a TV show called Black Lightning, which was, you know, when that character was created, you could tell it was just created to, oh, we need a black character. We'll call him Black Lightning whatever, you know, uninspiring, you know, so, now, what you get with this whole false diversity narrative, now, let's go to Marvel, Marvel turns Spider-Man black, you know what I'm saying, you got your Miles Morales, who they made a black Spider-Man, and, and here's the thing, it could have worked out, if he was his own character, where, okay, he got bitten by a spider too, because, because he has a different power set, he can go invisible, he can shoot electricity. If they would have called him the, you know, arachnid, you know what I'm saying, uh, or or web vault, web vault, I uh, really like that name, web vault. It could have gave him something other than Spider-Man, you know, because a lot of these companies do this where they'll turn, they'll turn a white character black, you know what I'm saying, look, look black people, we, we represent you. We turned the Kid Flash, he's black now. We've turned Spider-Man's black. They made an Iron Heart black. 
it's really them saying, look, look, black people. You know what I'm saying? Look, my they even turned the Hulk Asian at some point. You know, Marvel did all these things and it's false diversity. Because really what they're doing is, man, you know, the only, you know, look, black people, the only time you matter or, you know, we can have diversity based on you is if the character was white first. If the character was white first, now it's your turn, minority, black, Asian, you know, Latino. Now it's your turn, Indian. Now it's your turn to be this character that was predominantly white first. It's really giving minorities the leftovers and, you know, giving them leftovers and and touting it and talking as though it's a major accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look, Miles Morales, you know, he's the new Spider-Man. And, and the other thing they do when they uh, flip these characters racially is what they're basically doing is they use the racial split to basically somewhat increase the need for the original. You know what I'm saying? They somewhat use it to increase the need for the original character by saying, look, we, we made Spider-Man black with Miles Morales. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, they, they make the people that wanted Peter Parker, they want, now they make it, they make you want Peter Parker even more. You know what I'm saying? By, and, and here's the other thing they do by flipping characters racially is that now they have a scapegoat, a way to kill off the character without killing the main character, the original. For example, you had Miles Morales as Spider-Man and then eventually, you know, in his universe, I think the Ultimate Universe, Peter Parker died and uh, then Miles Morales, they put him in the, you know, new complete world whatever and now what they do is well whenever peter parker needs a break from being spider-man black guy it's your turn step up black guy now you could be spider-man oh we thought peter parker was dead your turn your turn black man you know what i'm saying and and the reason you could tell this is all bs is that i'm going to show you i'm going to show you some comics because here's the thing if they really cared about diversity they would have teamed up with black owned comic book creators and actually promote them look, look at this comic you know what i'm saying made by uh you know some black creators you know i think uh a brother from uh africa made this and then look at this look at this uh anansi the spider you know what i'm saying anansi the spider made by a black creator. The reason I show this is that if they truly gave a damn about minority representation and actually, you know what I'm saying, showcasing what black people are doing in comics, what Marvel, DC, and, you know, IDW, these bigger companies, what they would have done is they would have reached out to the black creators that created these books you know what i'm saying i gotta showcase a little more uh damn where's my and I, i'm really messing up i don't even show my own book you know what i'm saying look at that bye bye black people you know they would have contacted these uh black creators you know what i'm saying it would have contacted them and said hey we want to want to highlight your comic books to show we support black creators this is a book i created my i co-created you know i wrote it called solora sunrise you know what i'm saying if they really wanted to actually display diversity they would have contacted the black people latinos and minorities creating their own books then they would have highlighted it for example you know, DC in collaboration with Blackstone Entertainment. You know, they would have collaborated with these black creators to actually display and showcase their content. You know what I mean? Instead, what you get is they're basically saying the mainstream companies, DC, Marvel, 
you know, uh, IDW, all these big companies where they do racial swaps, they're basically saying we do not count. We do not count books created by minorities. You know, we don't count books created by black people. We don't count books created by Latinos. We don't count them because we were not involved. You know what I'm saying? Because they were not involved, they do not count them. You know what I'm saying? That's why you get all these racial swaps. It has nothing to do with uh, racial representation and, uh, you know, showcasing what blacks and minorities are capable of. It's all about their vanity. You know what I'm saying? Their vanity and their narcissism to say, hey, look, 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 black people, look, Latinos, look, minorities, we represented you. You know what I'm saying? You know, Marvel, we represented you. We turned, we turned, what is it? Miles Morales is what, the fifth, the eighth Spider-Man? Look, we had eight white Spider-Men. You know what I'm saying? We had a uh, white spider women. Look, blacks, we finally turned one into a minority. And the funny thing about Miles Morales is that uh, when he came out, they made sure, look, he, he checks all the boxes. He's black. He's Latino. And there was a rumor they were going to make him, uh, you know, homosexual as well. Way back when he was coming out. You know, they wanted to check all the marks, you know, uh, you know when they were creating him, whatever. And, uh, you know, th this is what happens, you know, this is what's happening in the mainstream comic book section. Because a lot of times, a lot of times they're basically, if we didn't get, if we didn't do it, if we didn't create it, it doesn't count. You know, if we didn't create these characters, they do not count. That's how the, the predominantly uh, white owned, you know, companies work. You know what I'm saying? It's diversity by our actions, not diversity by diverse people. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't count. You know, it doesn't count that if you go to Kickstarter, there's so many projects made by minorities and uh, blacks. You know what I'm saying? So many successful. You got the Trill League. You know, you have, uh, you got, uh, you got Bass. There's so many intellectual properties being made by minorities and blacks, you know, in, in general. But what they do is they do not count it. If Marvel, DC, IDW, if these big companies did not create it, it does not count. They exist within their own bubble. That's why you see a new, uh, what is it, they had a new Superman where, you know, Superman basically looks like Barack Obama. He's the president, you know, you know and, and, and the other thing they're doing, I don't want to, I'll probably save this for another uh, video, but they're watering down all these characters. They're watering them down, you know what I'm saying, with, with all these racial swaps. Because here's the thing, how hard would it be to create a character called, and, and I'd say a successful example is um you have a, uh, I think the character's called Blue Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Blue Marvel, which in my opinion, it's 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 such a bland and boring name, Blue Marvel. When they and it, it basically suggests that oh he's not he's not that you know special. And they made Blue Marvel in uh Marvel comics and it was by uh Grooks. You know what I'm saying? It's a black superhero. You know, but why call them Blue Marvel? It basically suggests, well, there's a Green Marvel, there's an Orange Marvel. You know, there's all these other colors. You know what I'm saying? This character is not very significant or special. They could have just called them, you know, Mighty Marvel or or uh, something Marvel. You know what I'm saying? Instead, they just call them Blue Marvel, which suggests, you know, it's not that special. You know, it's just a color pattern, you know. But, uh, you know, he was an original black character created. When you do something like that, you know, that's diversity. When you make an original character that doesn't just borrow or latch onto the legacy of a character that was white first, then you have something. But, 
you know, making Spider-Man black, DC Batman's black, you know, they're making all these characters racial swaps because cause that's their narrative. Their narrative is that, hey, black people, you're not represented until you were a, you're a character that was white first, you know. You know, Latinos, you're not represented until you were a character that was white first. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Asians, you're not represented until you were, you're a white, you were a, you're a new character that was white first. It's all about leftovers. That's the diversity narrative. I mean, over 90% of diversity in comics is leftovers. You know what I'm saying? It's giving minority characters leftovers. Oh, look, Aqualad. You know what I'm saying? You know Aquaman was black. You know, Aquaman was white. Now we give you Aqualad. You know what I'm saying? Aqualad or Aqu a black Aquaman. You know what I'm saying? We'll give you Iron Heart. You know, and Iron Heart could have worked out because it was a whole new, you know, the name is not bad. Iron Heart, you know, but instead they attached it to Iron Man and made it a rip off of Iron Man. Same color palette. You know, and that, that's the thing too. They use the same color palette. The characters not does not stand out. It's it's kind of like we invite, hey black guy, hey minority, hey Asian, we invited you to the party, but don't dance on the dance floor. You know, go lean on the wall somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to shine or attract anyone through your own individuality from your culture. We just invited you to the party because we didn't want to seem like we don't invite minorities and blacks. That's what DC, Marvel, that's what these big companies are doing with these uh, racial swaps, you know, of characters. You know what I mean? It's a false narrative of uh, false diversity. And it's really a narrative that all blacks, minorities, and Latinos deserve our leftovers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, Superman was black. I mean, Superman was white. Now, you know, Superman, well, he, he, well, I plan to do a video on Superman later on. But, yeah, you know, but basically any character that was white first, make them black. You know what I'm saying? Make them black. Make them Latino. You know what I'm saying? We want to we wanna have some inclusivity through was white first. You know what I'm saying? Give them the leftovers. You know what I mean? It's like coming to a party. It's like coming to a, a, a restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Coming to a restaurant and they say, you know what? You blacks, you Latinos, you're accepted at the restaurant, but you only get leftovers. You only get leftovers. You're not allowed to eat the fresh meals. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to eat anything fresh. All you're allowed to eat from the restaurant is leftovers. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works, man. That's how they're treating people. Come eat these leftovers. You know what I mean? You're allowed in a restaurant. Come eat these leftovers from last night. That that's how that's how they serve diversity. It's leftovers. You know what I mean? You're allowed in a restaurant, but you're not allowed to order anything fresh. You know, at all. You're only allowed to eat the leftovers. You know, that's all you're allowed to have. Well, uh, this has been Hold the Truth Hostage, where if the truth was so important, we wouldn't negotiate with lies. This is Pop the Culture, where we give you culture from a black pill perspective as a critical list with some critical thinking. Well, until next time, like, subscribe. Peace.